Part three, here we go. We're gonna check out the line array effect and then take a listen to what this bow tie object does. And then hear what happens when you fold a high frequency horn over on top of itself. So Jared, I was talking with our friend Austin about like all things bass. Mm -hmm. So today I thought we could explore how manufacturers control the mid-range and higher frequency sounds, particularly using line arrays. Um, so, I mean, you're probably familiar with this, but the idea is you put two speakers together and there's certain frequencies that will drop off less over time. So the normal thing is for them to lose six decibels every time you double the distance, like one foot to two foot to four to eight to 16, 32, and so on. With a, a line array, they make the frequencies only drop off three decibels every time you double the distance. So I've got these speakers lined up here, but we've got spacing in between them. All right, and we're gonna compare the sound of those with just the woofers activated to the sound of the speakers all clipped together in a line and see if it makes a difference. So I've got mid-range playing through the speakers now and we can see on the graph that we have quite a bit of loss in the upper mid-range area. So I'm gonna save this as a plot. So now all I'm gonna do is go up here and switch the cable from this line of speakers over to this line of speakers here. So you can see on the graph here, there's quite a bit more of this upper mid-range experiencing the line array effect. So you can even hear the difference, like how all the mid-range frequencies just stack up together. Same number of boxes, just different physical configuration. So we can roughly calculate the frequency range that will experience the line array effect. So uh, if we measure the entire length here, grab that there, and we're looking at like 60 inches. So the wavelength that is 60 inches long is about 225 hertz. So that's the absolute lower end of the spectrum. Uh, it's not a hard on off effect. Um, it's kind of more of a gradual thing. We'd ideally like a much longer line array so that you know, we could have many times the length of that frequency or even lower. But for this demonstration, I just want to show that the line array effect even shows up in these small little configurations. The upper end of the spectrum is determined by the distance between each box. So in this case, we've got about 10 inches, and we want that to be half the wavelength of the highest frequency that we can turn into a line array. So in this case, that's like 675. So we'd probably want to cross over with the horn at like 650 hertz, but that's a really low frequency for this small of a horn to try to handle. You know, we could like increase the size of the horn, I guess, but then you have more space between the woofers and then uh, you lower that highest frequency that you can make into a line array effect. So you kind of have this like gap that just shifts down. Um, we have to figure out a way to close the gap. Some people have tried having smaller drivers, like two, four inches, but then you start to lose the low frequency power because like two, four inches doesn't have nearly as much surface area as an eight inch. You could have the eight inch, but also have the four inches, but then you're dealing with more cost, complexity, you know, more, more crossover points and this sort of thing. We just, we need to find a more elegant and simple solution to make this work. And this particular manufacturer did that with this device. And all they did was put it in front of the, the woofer just like that. Basically, it splits the sound into two virtual smaller sources, which extends the line array effect up another octave to like 1400 hertz, which is like well within the crossover point of a horn this size without sacrificing any of the, the low frequency functionality of the eight inch. So we can actually hear the effect that this has. Um, I have this binaural microphone here, so if you're listening with headphones, you can really hear what we're hearing in the space. So I made this contraption that has all six of these things connected to it in a line, I'm just gonna put them right in front of the woofers and we'll be able to hear the difference. Okay, you ready? Here we go. That's a big difference. So it's cool, we can actually see this on the graph. So the red is what we were listening to without the devices and the white is now with them. Yeah, and the, you see the SPL stand flat a lot higher. Yep. Okay, so and then for the horns, for the high frequency control, um, we have a horn like this, but you know, this is spreading sound a bit like how this spreads light. Um, so it's got some directionality to it, but we need something that's really tighter, like a laser beam. Yeah. So that first horn we saw is kind of like this, right? And it shoots sound very widely. Um, we need a laser beam. So the horn that we'd have to have for that would have to be so long, right? to be able to shoot sound straight forward. It's not gonna fit inside this like tiny line array box. So the most elegant solution that I've seen is what this company came up with where they actually put a fold in a long horn that 
ended up kind of looking like this. We got our fold here, it goes down, okay. The next thing they did was actually take this fold in the horn and give it a little bit of a curve. So it acts like a lens for sound. So then what they can do is shorten this up a lot and put it like right here. So the total horn will actually end up looking kind of like this. So you have this curved section and then it goes back a little ways and you have it right there. So it reflects off of this internal wall and then exits the horn, but it shoots straight forward because kind of like virtually, it's actually this super, super, super long horn, okay? So you can see with this horn, there's this like curved internal reflector wall the sound bounces off of before it comes out. So it allows the driver to be here instead of like way back here. So you can really scrunch up into this tiny unit. So it has this really strong directivity to it. You can hear if I point it up and then at me. Really, really tight pattern. Now in the horizontal plane, if we turn it, you can hear how there's some amount of directivity. But if we wanted to have it wider, there's these cool things that we can put inside that will make the sound wider, but only in that direction. So you can hear now it's like, but it still has that laser beam focus in that direction. So that way we can fit this horn into a very, very small speaker box and have an extremely compact system that has a lot of directivity. So another thing that we can do with line arrays is actually add a little bit of curvature to the line. So instead of them being flat, they can kind of be curved. And I can collapse the boxes and you can hear what that sounds like. So here we go. So as opposed to being flat. So just right over here, we've got a happy little line array making some, some happy little sounds, just like that. Nice. Okay, no, but for real. Um, so we have line array boxes here, and instead of having them just flatten a line, you know, as we go down, we can add some curvature to the array so that maybe the bottom ones kind of point down like this. Okay, so you have a venue, right? Doing this messes up the line array effect down at the bottom here. So the sound shooting down at the people here is gonna be like a little bit less in terms of SPL than the sound that's up here in the flat part shooting towards the, the back of the audience, right? So as you walk from front to back, it ends up being a lot smoother. So Jerry, thanks for hanging out today and playing around with some speakers. Um, what'd you think? Uh, I thought it was really fascinating. The, uh, these little devices up in front of the woofer really really made a huge difference on the, on the frequency response. The horn thing was what really kind of blew my mind, that they were able to, just by putting a bend in it, shrink it down so it would fit in such a compact cabinet. It's, it's really brilliant. Yeah, it's pretty cool technology. Yeah. All right, well, thanks. Okay.